Hello welcome to IT Expert YouTube video series. Today we are going to talk about problem solving method. 1. What is fishbone diagram or cause and effect or Ishikawa diagram? The fishbone diagram or Ishikawa diagram is a cause and effect diagram that helps managers to track down the reasons for imperfections, variations, defects, or failures. The diagram looks just like a fish skeleton with the problem at its head and the causes for the problem feeding into the spine. Once all the causes that underlie the problem have been identified, managers can start looking for solutions to ensure that the problem doesn't become a recurring one. Can also be used in product development. Having a problem-solving product will ensure that your new development will be popular provided people care about the problem you are trying to solve. The fishbone diagram strives to pinpoint everything that's wrong with current market offerings so that you can develop an innovation that doesn't have these problems. Finally, the fishbone diagram is also a great way to look for and prevent quality problems before they ever arise. Use it to troubleshoot before there is trouble, and you can overcome all or most of your teething troubles when introducing something new. How to make an Ishikawa diagram To start developing your Ishikawa diagram, you will need a paper, a pen and follow the steps below. Step 1 First of all you have to determine what the effect or problem is to study. Step 2 With the determined effect, you have to gather all the information about this problem and this will be the basis for the next step. Step 3 Bring together a multidisciplinary team from different areas, so that they can help in the creation of the Ishikawa diagram. After presenting the information about the diagram it is necessary to promote a brainstorming about the problem that needs to be solved. Maybe you must be wondering, what is brainstorming? Basically it is an activity designed to explore the creative potentiality of an individual or, as in this case, a group. Step 4 The main causes must be studied classified and prioritized, so actions can be elaborated focused on correcting the priority causes of the problem. Step 5 We have reached the last step in it you need to draw the diagram according to the 6M. Be very careful because it will be this design that the whole team will follow. What are the 6 categories of the fishbone diagram? 1. Machines Many problems are derived from the failures of machines and equipment. This may be caused by improper maintenance or the lack of maintenance. Considering this, it is always important to supervise the operation of all equipment, so the operation is close to perfection, avoiding damages. 2. Materials This problem is related to the use of materials in the process. May be related to out-of-spec material or incorrect volume. For this reason it is extremely important to have a good relationship with your supplier, so that he offers correct products, in the right quantity and of course, in the ideal quality. 3. Manpower It is related to the attitudes of employees and the execution of activities. This problem can be caused by their haste, recklessness, lack of qualification or even lack of competence. You know humans are susceptible to failure, do not you? So, in order to avoid errors in certain processes, it is recommended to use the polka yoke. But what is polka yoke? It is an error-proof device designed to avoid defects in manufacturing processes. 4. Mother Nature These are problems related to the internal and external environment of the organization. When talking about external factors you can talk about pollution and the weather instability, for example. And in the internal environment it could be the lack of space, incorrect layout, noise, among others. It is crucial to have a working environment favorable to everyone, so that they have a greater pleasure in performing their duties. With everything working as planned, you reduce the rotation of the employees, reducing cost and consequently increasing the profit. 5. Measurements This M is related to the metrics used to measure, control and monitor processes. You may be using an incorrect way to measure your process. This is generating rework and harming your process. 6. Methods Refers to the procedures and methods adopted by the organization during activities. The method can be defined through software and planning tools. It represents the way you plan the progress of your activities and how to control what is happening. 
Advantages and Disadvantages of Ishikawa Diagram Advantages There are many advantages to using this quality tool in the business environment. I will now list six of them so you can think about it. 1. The first benefit of using the diagram is the fact that it is a visual tool, easy to understand and easy to analyze. 2. It influences all employees involved in the process to commit to the results to be achieved. 3. It helps to find the root cause of the problem. 4. Can be used as a statistical tool for total quality control. 5. It prioritizes an analysis in more detail, helping to make more effective decisions. 6. It has a generic use and flexible structure, being applicable in problems of different natures. Disadvantages Despite its great applicability and simplicity in cause definition, the tool has not only positive points. We can cite some disadvantages, such as It does not signal the real gravity of the problem. Often effort is wasted in identifying the cause of effects that have no great relevance. In addition to these disadvantages it is necessary to take some precautions when developing and implementing the Ishikawa diagram. It should be used preferably by employees who already have some knowledge about the PDCA cycle. Because it is a relatively simple tool, it is necessary to have a business structure favorable to this implement. Because they cover different areas and a large number of people, it is possible that exists different opinions, being necessary to know how to administer them. Ishikawa Diagram Example Extremely Important Tool The Ishikawa Diagram is a valuable tool in discovering the root cause of a problem. It brings a lot of benefits to the whole process. With a clearer view of the effects it is possible to take corrective and preventive measures on the problem more effectively, and then eliminate its root cause. Nowadays, all sectors, whether in industry, marketing, finance and others, use this diagram constantly, showing the importance of it. And it's important to remember, always focus on the client when proposing the actions, as they are the most responsible for the success of your company. Do you want to be a more complete professional? Check this out. Looking for development in your professional career? What do you think of becoming a reference professional in the market through one of the most used methodologies in the world? Our black belt training in Lean Six Sigma is the next step towards your growth and recognition. With our black belt certification, you will learn how to manage projects, increase results, lead teams, and the main Lean Six Sigma tools for solving highly complex corporate problems in search of strategic competitiveness. Do not waste time. Develop the knowledge and skills that will make you a reference professional in the market. Interview Questions and Answers 1. What is Root Cause Analysis? Root Cause Analysis is a problem-solving technique used to identify the underlying cause of a problem. Once the root cause is identified, steps can be taken to prevent the problem from occurring again. 2. Why is it important to perform root cause analysis in an organization? Root cause analysis is important in an organization because it helps to identify the underlying causes of problems or issues. This can help to prevent future problems from occurring, and can also help to improve efficiency and effectiveness overall. 3. What are the pros and cons of using root cause analysis as a tool? The main pro of using root cause analysis is that it can help you to identify and correct the underlying causes of problems, rather than just treating the symptoms. This can lead to more effective and lasting solutions. The main con is that root cause analysis can be time-consuming and may require expert help to be effective. 4. What's the best way to document root causes? The best way to document root causes is to use a cause and effect diagram. This will help you to identify all of the potential causes of a problem and then narrow down to the root cause. 5. What is the 5 Whys Method? The 5 Whys Method is a simple but effective problem-solving technique that can be used to quickly get to the root cause of an issue. The idea is to keep asking why until you get to the root cause of the problem. This method can be used on its own or as part of a larger root cause analysis process. 6. What do you understand about Ishikawa diagrams? 
Ishikawa diagrams, also called cause and effect diagrams or fishbone diagrams, are a tool used in root cause analysis. They are used to visually organize the potential causes of a problem or issue. The diagram is structured like a fish skeleton, with the main issue in the center and the potential causes branching out from it. 7. Is it possible to use software tools to automate root cause analysis? If yes, then how? Yes, it is possible to use software tools to automate root cause analysis. This can be done by using a tool that can help identify patterns in data and then using that information to identify potential causes of problems. 8. What are the most critical steps involved in performing root cause analysis? The most critical steps involved in performing root cause analysis are 1. Define the problem 2. Gather data 3. Analyze the data 4. Identify root causes 5. Develop solutions 6. Implement solutions 7. Evaluate results 9. When should root cause analysis be performed and how often? Root cause analysis should be performed whenever an issue or problem arises. It is a way of investigating the problem to find out what caused it and how to prevent it from happening again in the future. Root cause analysis should be performed as soon as possible after the problem occurs so that corrective action can be taken quickly. 10. What's the difference between a cause and effect diagram, fault tree analysis, and failure mode effects analysis? A cause and effect diagram is a graphical tool used to identify all of the possible causes of a particular problem or event. A fault tree analysis is a technique used to identify all of the potential failure points in a system. A failure mode effects analysis is a tool used to identify the potential effects of a failure in a system. Thank you for watching this video. We provide handspin training with Labs Homework Group Projects Prepare you for the certification Provide real projects Internship opportunities Support you in Resume LinkedIn Staffing support Provide tech references In-person online class Class retake options and more Call us at 847-350-9034 for your free career consultation meeting Please do not forget to like share and subscribe to our channel for the latest videos.